Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Where are you? I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Five-year-old Carlos Chavez is devastated over the loss of his brother, but nearly as devastating as 18-year-old Abraham's death is the fact that Carlos is partly to blame. It was an accident. Everything that happened, it was an accident. Maria Camacho, the boy's mother, tries to explain what Carlos says he just isn't ready to talk about, the fight that killed Abraham, a fight between brothers. Middletown police say the two started arguing on their way home from a Centerville nightclub Saturday morning. Their mom says the fight was over money. It's not a big issue. It was just something, okay, I'll take you to work, you know, just give me gas money. But things escalated by the time the brothers got to Frickers in Middletown. That's when police say the two men got out of the car and Carlos punched Abraham. It's not a killer punch. It was not something that it was, you know, big or something. No, it was like a snap punch. And he lost his balance and... Abraham fell back, hit his head on the concrete. He died the next day from head injuries suffered in the fall. Maria doesn't blame her oldest son, so overcome with emotion talking about it, in fact, her words are hard to understand. But the message is clear. I know my neither one would never do it. Would never hurt any, neither one of them. So far, Carlos has not been charged in connection with his brother's death. Those around him say he is paying the price. A deadly family feud and a barrage of bullets being fired in a local neighborhood. Police now calling it a savage case of sibling rivalry with a Long Beach man driving all the way to Utah to murder his own brother and set his house on fire. Eyewitness News reporter Amy Powell live with more of the wild video and what investigators are saying tonight. Amy. Mark, police say this Southern California man was heavily armed, carrying a handgun, a shotgun, and 23 fully loaded magazines when he traveled to Utah and killed his brother. Body cam footage capturing a gun battle. Police officers in North Ogden, Utah, opening fire on a man shooting at them from a house. The deadly confrontation happening on April 27th after 66-year-old Jeffrey Roberts drove from his Long Beach home to his brother's house near Salt Lake City. A doorbell security camera recording as he approaches the door. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? He exchanges a few words with his brother Scott, then suddenly pulls out a gun and starts shooting. A neighbor called police. I was sitting on the couch watching TV, and I heard shots and jumped up and ran out on my deck and and um, heard three more shots. Jeffrey Roberts is seen walking out of the home, then returning moments later carrying a shotgun and a bag. Investigators say he used flares to set the house on fire shortly before police arrived. He was shot and killed by the officers. There was quite a bit of gunfire coming from the, the subject. Firefighters arrived and put out the flames. 
Scott Roberts was found dead. His wife was wounded. In Long Beach, longtime friends held an estate sale at the home where Jeffrey Roberts lived. They are shocked by the violence. Family estrangement and situation led to this tragedy. Others pushed him to the brink, we believe. Police are still investigating the motive for the shooting, but again, friends believe it stemmed from a family dispute. Reporting live, Amy Powell, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Two people are dead this morning in North Highlands after a shooting at a birthday party. Police say a brother and a sister got into a fight that led to a murder-suicide on San Ardo Way. Here now is KCRA3's Chris Riva. Kids corralled into a yard across the street. Birthday party turned into a murder-suicide investigation at the corner of Santa Fe and San Ardo Way. The party replaced with police lights and tape. Neighbors say it happened quickly. We heard pop, pop. Police say a male in his 40s got into an argument with his sister, who was in her 30s, in this garage. He pulled out a handgun and shot her. After the female victim was shot, that her brother came into the residence, displayed a handgun. That's when the family members ran out of the house. He then returned to the garage where he apparently shot himself. Neighbors say the family's only lived in this community for a couple of months. In the neighborhood, I'm not entirely surprised, but next door, again, blows my mind. This is crazy. It's sad for somebody to do that, especially at a kid's birthday party. The sheriff's department confirms the party was for one of the children of the woman that was killed. They're unsure of why they were arguing or how the happy event turned deadly. The scene's very emotional right now, so they've got preliminary statements to suggest what occurred here, and we'll probably get more detailed statements a little later on. A five-year-old little girl is abandoned on a sidewalk in near freezing temperatures, wearing only her pajamas. It was all caught on camera, but what's truly shocking is the identity of the man accused of leaving her in the cold. Jim Murray has the story. It's heartbreaking video. A five-year-old girl is abandoned. She's completely on her own, wearing only light pajamas and wrapping a thin blanket around her shoulders. What makes it all the more shocking is that the man who left little Aislinn Weaver all alone is her own father. This is where Aislinn was left. She had some fleece blankets and made a makeshift bed and even fell asleep for a time. She was left here just after 5 in the morning and it was only 38 degrees. It happened at a college campus in Ogden, Utah. She says her dad told her he was going to look for a dog and not to follow. He gives her his sweatshirt and then walks away to get on a bus. There she is all alone. You can see her covering herself with the blanket as she settles in for the night. Two and a half hours later, the sun has risen and she wakes up, frightened and confused. She starts looking for a way home. When she was dropped off at the campus, uh, the video picks her up walking up this sidewalk. And then when she was found later that morning, she had left here on foot and walked around to the south side of our health technology building. And here is little Aislinn today, back in the warm embrace of her mother, Gina Weaver, who still can't believe what happened. She didn't think no one was gonna find her. She didn't think she was ever gonna see me again. Aislinn's father, 41-year-old Adrian Sanchez, had visitation rights the night police say he abandoned her, reportedly because he wanted to go partying. For him to go and leave her, he could have called me. He could have called anybody. Aislinn still has nightmares about being abandoned. She was shivering. She was crying. Josh Miller is the officer Josh. who spotted Aislinn wandering on the college campus. He stopped by with a little present to cheer her up. You're happy and that you're home with your mom again. Hopefully, she'll never have to experience a night like this ever again. The father's been arrested and taken into custody not too far from where cops say he abandoned his little girl. He has been charged with child abandonment. Developing now, authorities have made an arrest in the death of a pregnant woman who was murdered and set on fire in northwest Fresno. Her own brother, now in custody, accused in the crime. Thanks for joining us for Action News Live at 5. I'm Vanessa Vasconcelos. And I'm Warren Armstrong. Action News reporter Brittany Jacob is live downtown at the Fresno County Jail tonight with the new and disturbing information on this investigation. Brittany. Well, good evening, guys. The family members have just confirmed that Nakaya was eight months pregnant with baby Noah. And now this is, comes right after the family just threw her a baby shower over the weekend. Now, two lives have been cut short. And we want to warn you that this, uh, the, the details in this investigation can be very disturbing. 
information about possible 1144 in a field. They, at Cornelia, 4488 North Cornelia, they have the victim apparently set on fire at this time. Around 12.30 on Tuesday afternoon, Fresno police and fire responded to this dirt access road for a report of a dead woman set on fire. Authorities have now confirmed the victim is 26-year-old Nakia Logan, who was pregnant at the time of her murder. The suspect, her own brother, 41-year-old Aaron Dudley. Police Chief Paco Balderrama says it's part of an unsettling trend. As a police chief, I find this horrific. Uh, and the fact that we've had, um, you know, five babies um, murdered in this fashion the last year is, is something that keeps me up at night. Detectives believe Logan and her unborn child, baby Noah, had been stabbed numerous times. They say that stabbing happened just a few blocks away from the home Logan shared with her mother and brother. This is not the first time authorities were at that home. About a year and a half ago, they took Dudley on a 72-hour hold after being deemed a threat to himself and others. Police say this time when they arrived, Dudley was trying to cover up the murder. But this is a person who, who had the wherewithal to try to clean up the evidence, try to dispose of the body, uh, ran when uh, the police came to knock on the door to see what was going on. So this, this is not somebody who does not know what he's, what he's doing. District Attorney Lisa Smithcamp says she anticipates her office to file two counts of murder because of how far along Logan's pregnancy was. That would make Dudley eligible for the death penalty. Now the family today, they told me they are completely grief stricken. And while they did not want to go on camera, they told me that Nakaya was a beautiful spirit. She was loving, very, very family oriented and trusting. And again, this uh, mo the motive of this case has not yet been determined and this investigation is still ongoing. It's a shocking 911 call from a mom who says that her two-year-old son strangled his baby sister to death. It seemed like a terrible family tragedy. What happened next would shock everyone. Police say the mom is a monster and that she strangled the baby herself and tried to pin the murder on her toddler son. We are here on of 27-year-old Kristen Di Pasquale said she desperately tried to revive the child. I'm trying to, 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 to melt him now that he's not looking up. I don't know what to do. Oh my God. Is she breathing? No. I love my baby. Police say their suspicions were aroused because the shower floor and towels were dry, indicating she was not in the shower when 18-month-old Mia was strangled with Halloween holiday lights like these. And the medical examiner in Orlando says a toddler like little Michael does not have the physical strength to strangle his baby sister. San Francisco forensic pathologist Dr. Judy Melanek disagrees. Is it even possible for a two-year-old to have strangled an infant? Yes, it's definitely possible for a two-year-old to strangle an infant. Two-year-olds are mobile, they're quite strong. Anyone who's put a two-year-old into clothing that they don't want to get into knows how strong they can be. And it is not unheard of for siblings to kill their siblings inadvertently. The accused mom looked dazed when she appeared in court. She said only a single word. Do you have any questions about your, uh, your appearance here today? <laughs> Good luck, man. Good for you. back on the line. She's advising that her mother has just killed her sister. We're trying to get further. Excuse speech. She's advising there's a knife involved. We're still trying to get further.
in this VSI, it looks like the mother has stabbed her sister. We're trying to get rid of her. We don't know where she's at. We're out. County unit in front of me is going to be the one on the right right there with the door ajar. Dispatch 2706. I got a child with a stab wound in the chest. I need medical priority one. I'm clear, stab wound to the chest. Wake up, baby. Stand up. The mother was drowning it in the bathtub when we found it. Clear. 13, 17. Send whoever we got. 80, 54, 18. Start that way. If you get a uh, DB on the line as well, you can't please. Come on, baby, come on. You all right? There you go. That's my trust. Baby's starting to cry. Claire, baby's starting to cry. Come on, What's honey. Come on, honey. Wake up, baby. I don't know, it's not bad. 2706. I got no, not much active bleeding from the injury. It's below the throat. Come on, She's honey. She's moaning. Keep coming, party one. Come on, honey. They're coming. Party one. Keep waiting for us, all right? Keep waiting. Thank you, Monroe. There you go, eyes are open. <laughs> Good girl, yeah. Keep breathing, honey. You got two. Two. All right, I got one. Hectorly bleeding again. She's still crying. Can you advise? It's just under the neck. going to be at the bottom of the throat. T, within family dynamics, specifically in the context of sibling rivalry and conflicts between parents and children, can be complex and deeply impactful. It involves ongoing animosity, competition, and disputes that arise within a family and can lead to lasting and intense feuds. Let me provide some insights into each aspect. Sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry is a common occurrence in many families. It refers to the competition, jealousy, and conflict that can arise between siblings. This rivalry often stems from a desire for parental approval, attention, or limited resources. Siblings may engage in various forms of competition, such as excelling academically, being favored by parents, or securing resources like inheritance or family assets. Such ongoing competition can result in animosity, resentment, and a strained sibling relationship. Parents fighting their children. Conflict between parents and children can arise due to various reasons, including diverging opinions, differing priorities, and clashes in personalities or beliefs. 
These conflicts may arise during adolescence when children are developing their own identities and seek autonomy, often leading to dashes with parent authority. Additionally, conflicts can emerge due to parental expectations, disciplinary methods, academic or career choices, or disagreements on personal values or lifestyle choices. Ongoing disputes often evoke and erode issues and trust, create resentment, and result in strained parent-child relationships. These forms of enmity within family feuds can have a profound consequence on individuals and the family as a whole. They can lead to heightened stress and tension with the family unit, affecting the mental and emotional well-being for all involved parties. Ongoing conflicts may result in damaged relationships, weakened bond, and a breakdown in communication. Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and killed him. <coughs> then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? I, I do not know. A am I my brother's keeper? What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth, and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bore Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Mahujiel, and Mahujiel begot Methushiel, and Methushiel begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. And Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who play the harp and flute. And as for Zillah, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. 
and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. Then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. 